in this video we are going to study stationarity with augmented DK Fuller test in Python using Spider IDE. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice is included within it. Okay, so let's go into Spider IDE. So the first step within the video is we need to import the corresponding packages. Therefore, we comment this as step one, which is packages. And we are going to import pandas as pd. We import pandas for data frames. Then we're going to import statsmodels.api as sm. We're importing that feature from statsmodels for data downloading. Then we're going to import statsmodels dot tsa dot stat tools as st and we're importing that feature from stats models for augmented dk fuller test and last we're going to import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt and we're importing that feature from matplotlib for the corresponding chart to run these code lines, we go ahead, select them, and then we can either click the Run Selection button or we can press F9 on the keyboard. Then we continue with step number two, which is data. For data, we're going to create an object named mData, model data, underscore obj for object, which is equal to, and here we'll be using sm feature from stats models dot datasets dot get underscore our dataset, and we open parentheses. First parameter, which is data name equals to, and within quotations we have air passengers, comma, and at the following row we have package equals to, and within quotations data sets, comma, and at the following row we have cache equals to true. So what we're doing here is the following: we're downloading air passengers data from data sets R package. And with cache equals to true means once we download the data, it saves it locally, so we don't need to go and download it again every time we run the code. Notice that this will download data and documentation within mData underscore obj object. Therefore, we are going to create a new object named mData with only the data, therefore equals to mData underscore obj, and we're going to get its dot data attribute. And we want to convert this into a pandas data frame, so we overwrite it data equals to pd or pandas dot data frame and we open parenthesis data equals to m data object and we're going to select its value column and we're going to set its index with dot set underscore index and within parenthesis and at the following row of the parameter pd dot that's pandas date underscore range and we open parenthesis start equals to within quotations 1949 comma end equals to within quotations 1961 comma freq or frequency equals to m because we have a monthly frequency and if you want to read the full documentation of this data you can do so with the following code line which is print and from m data underscore obj we're going to get its dot two underscores doc two underscores attribute. So to run this code lines now, we're going to go ahead, select them, and we are going to press F9 on the keyboard directly. And as we can see, this prints the documentation within the console. So we're going to scroll up. And we have air passengers, our documentation. And we can see that we have monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands from 1949 to 1960. If we go into Spider Variable Explorer, we can see the two objects being created. mData underscore obj, that's the object with data and documentation, and mData, which is the data frame with only the data. So if we double click on any of the cells, we can see part of this data. So we have the index with the corresponding date, and then the column with value, which, as mentioned previously, is the monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands. So now we're going to continue with ranges delimiting. 
and we're going to create two ranges, a training range for model fitting and a testing range for model forecasting. So let's begin with training range. So we create the object name T data, which is equal to M data. And we're going to select from the beginning of the time series all the way to the end of 1958, therefore 1958-12-31 or 31st of December of 1958. And then we create the testing range which is F data object and it's equal to M data object. And in this case, we're going to select from the beginning of 1959. So 1959-01-01, so January 1st of 1959, all the way to the end of the time series. So as we can see here, we have the training range, which is the first 10 years of data from 1949 to 1958. And then we have the testing range, which is the last two years of data, 1959 and 1960. In this video, we'll only be working within the training range. So to run these code lines, we go ahead, select them, and we press F9 on the keyboard. And now we want to visualize training range data. So we're going to do its corresponding chart. And for this, we will be using matplotlib. So we have plt.plot, and within it, we are going to include t data. Then we have plt dot y label that's vertical axis label and that's going to be air passengers then we have plt dot x label that's horizontal axis label and it's going to be year and last we want to show the chart with plt dot show open and close parentheses so to run this code lines we go ahead select them and then we press f9 on the keyboard And with this, we see the chart right here within the console if we scroll up. Also, if we go into the plots tab within Spider, we can see the chart as well. So we have air passengers on the vertical axis, then we have year on the horizontal axis, and the solid blue line, which is the training range data. So now that we have the data ready, we can continue with step number three, which is first order stationarity. And for this, we are going to study augmented decay fuller test. And for this, we're going to create an object named ADF for augmented decay fuller test, which is equal to, and here we'll be using ST feature from statsmodels.adfuller function, and within it, the following parameters, which are x equals to t data, so training range data, regression equals to and within quotations CT. So augmented decay fuller test regression is going to include a constant and a trend variable. And then we have max lag equals to 12. So this is the training range data differences lag order. And here we're including 12 because we have data with a monthly frequency. Notice that we need to check and test if constant, trend variable, and this training range data differences number of lags are needed within augmented DK Fuller test. Also, notice that ranges delimiting and augmented DK Fuller test function parameters were only included as educational examples, which can be modified according to your needs. So the following step is we want to print the results from the test. So we use print function and within it we have first ADF, the test statistic, which is found at ADF object position zero, that's Python notation, that's the first position. And then ADF underscore p value. So the test statistic approximated p value that is found at ADF position one with Python notation, that's the second position. So let's go ahead and run this code lines by selecting them and then we're going to press F9 on the keyboard. And we can see the results being printed right here within the console. So we have augmented DK Fuller test statistic and the associated approximated p-value. So regarding this augmented DK Fuller test statistic associated approximated p-value 
we have the individual null hypothesis that previous period training range theta coefficient is equal to zero, or that training range theta has a unit root. If rejected, training range theta is first order trend stationary, or assumed with a constant mean around a deterministic trend, when including 12 lags in augmented DK Fuller test. If not rejected, training range theta is not first order trend stationary, or assumed with a non constant mean around a deterministic trend, when including 12 lags in augmented DK Fuller test. Okay, so with this, we finish with the code file, so we can go ahead and save it. And with this, we also finish with this video. Thank you for watching.